People send me links to articles all the time, specifically written by pseudoscientific academic stooges with PhDs. And there's a uh, prestigious article below, and it said that they figured out magnetism. <laughs> I read the article three times. I'll put a link below to this article for you. And uh, it's full of not my opinion or my feeling or my belief. It's full of so much self-contradictory nonsense. It's not even funny, but I'll just even use one of their annotated diagrams here below. And by the way, you know, of course, I'm working on the fourth edition of my book, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, easily the most popular book I've ever written. Not any of my, you know, ancient Greek or poly translations, but the book on field theory. I mean, of course, the only reason why the visible universe exists is due to magnetism and magnetism only. But I mean, the nonsensical BS that is in this article is absolutely fantastical. And I don't mean that in a complimentary sense. It's, it's fantastically absurd. I mean, it's on the level of unicorns and leprechauns as far as explanations go. Um, and I do mean this succinctly, and I've done it a few times. If you go up to any professor of physics or, uh, or uh, any uh, professor of uh, astrophenomena and say, you know, this is a really simple question. What is a magnet by definition? They actually can't give you an explanation. And I've said countless times in countless different videos, it's okay not to know the explanation or the answers to things, but it's succinctly accurate to state that no one has ever gone looking for the answers to something that they already think that they know the answers to. And it's absolutely ludicrous. What defines a magnet since, let's say both of these are exactly the same thing. Here we actually have the neodymium iron, these are stones of course, they're not magnets. Neodymium iron, a boron, ceramic composite before it becomes a magnet. In other words, it's just a lump of ceramic metal composed of neodymium uh, iron boron. And here we actually have uh, what we call the magnet, which would be the exact same object after it becomes a magnet. Well, since there's no quantitative difference, then what, therefore, is it that is the qualitative nature that defines the magnet before it becomes a magnet to after it becomes a magnet? And that really simple question literally confounds people. And it's okay, like I said, not to know the answer, but these scientists, and I do mean all of them, essentially, they'll say, you, we know what a magnet is. Sure we do. It's like, are you sure? I've had people tell me, it's like, sure we know it, man, because they're in our cell phones, and our computers. We know what defines a magnet. It's like, well, if you know what it is, then you should give me the answer for it. And they can't do it. Um, I would like you to check out this article below. This article actually made me feel good because I'm looking at this. You know, I'm always crushing my brain working on uh, this book, and I've got literally hundreds and hundreds of pages of notes to add to the fifth edition. The fourth edition, excuse me, there has to be ultimately six editions of my book on magnetism. And I read this nonsensical garbage and it just makes me laugh. And right here in one of their diagrams it says an atom with no magnetic field. There's no such thing as something that has no magnetic field. Whether something is diamagnetic, or paramagnetic, or ferromagnetic, everything is magnetic. I've shown that the most diamagnetic element in the universe, bismuth, is magnetoreactive, but of course people don't understand what so-called magnetic attraction is and so-called, there's no such thing as magnetic attraction by the way, and so-called magnetic repulsion, but they also can't give you the definition of what defines a magnet. What defines a magnet is point source incommensurability. It's the exact same thing that distinguishes, it's a perfect analogy, thank you very much, saying that to myself, defines the difference between a 5 watt light bulb and a 5 watt laser. You, t you say it to the common person that's not scientifically or logically minded and say, what's the difference? You know, 5 watt light bulb is pretty useless, and these are a lot brighter than 5 watts, are illuminating my face. A 5 watt laser will burn a hole in your ass, right? It's dangerous. I've got a 5 watt blue laser. It's really friggin' dangerous. You know, that's dangerous, whereas a 5 watt light bulb is useless. Well, 5 watts is 5 watts, right? What's that point source incommensurability, the actual same distinguishment between the... Uh, the uh, qualitative nature, not the quantitative nature, of a 5 watt laser versus a 5 watt light bulb, since they're both light and they're both emitting 5 watts, both have 5 watts of power that's uh, powering the illumination. 
What's the distinguishing uh, difference qualitatively? It's the exact same qualitative difference, the point source incommensurability that defines a magnet. People will say, well, the domains are aligned. Well, that's a description. Well, of course the domains are aligned in a magnet, but that is not denotative of what the nature of a magnet is. And I do mean this literally, not figuratively. If you ask a scientist, what is the hardcore definition of what a magnet is? This is before it becomes a magnet, and it is quantitatively 100% identical after it becomes a magnet. So therefore, the only distinction between this and this is a qualitative difference. What is that qualitative difference that defines a magnet? And they don't know. And it's okay not to know, but they go around telling everybody that they do, and they don't have the answer for that. They literally don't. It's not like I'm ignoring their answer or I'm saying the same thing in a different way. They don't know. There's no such thing as an atom with no magnetic field, like it says here in this academic uh, paper. It's ridiculous. Paramagnetic, diamagnetic, or uh, ferromagnetic makes no distinction. Everything is magnetoreactive. Every atom is, and this is where the scientists are correct, partially so. They've, they've been telling you and me since high school and college that Every atom is 99.9999999% empty space. It's kind of like a super tiny BB inside of a super huge balloon, which is very, very crudely conceptually accurate. But what is the air inside of that balloon? Well, the answer is that every uh, atom is a, uh, is a dynamo. And the air of that balloon that makes up the, uh, the radius and measured in picometers of each and every atom, whether that be a small radius or big radius, is magnetodielectricity. There's no such thing as a magnet that has no, an atom that has no magnetic field. This is ridiculous. This whole paper is just riddled. This very, very prestigious academic paper is riddled with nonsense, rubbish, self-contradictory foolishness. It, it literally is just foolishness. They're trying to define to you what a magnet is. And maybe, you know, the very caption of this one, it says, how magnets work. Well, this doesn't tell you how magnet work. It doesn't even tell you what magnetism is. Magnetism is, of course, a ether perturbation modality, no different than dielectricity, no different than electricity, which is a hybrid of dielectricity and magnetism, phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification. These are just different uh, pressure modality expressions, whether they be circular, lin uh, linear, uh, longitudinal, transverse, uh, toroidal, or hyperboloidal, just like ice, water, and steam. Ice, water, and steam are just different temperature and pressure modalities of water, right? There's no distinction between ice, water, and steam. They're just three different things that are uh, given uh, different uh, names due to their uh, temperature and pressure modality states of existence. The same is true of magnetism and dielectricity. I tell you this not superficially, but very, very deeply, that these idiots do not know what a magnet is, what defines a magnet, nor do they know what magnetism is. I love reading these articles because it actually... It cheers me up, and I just, I roll my eyes like, my God, these people are so stupid. You know, these are, you know, there's some images of some PhD, uh, postdoctoral, you know, folks that are working prestige. These people don't know anything. They literally don't know anything. And I, it actually tickles me to read stuff like this. I just, like, my God. When I came to the part where it said, an atom with no magnetic field... That's ridiculous. That is about as ridiculous as it gets. There's no such, there's no such thing as any... <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's like saying a mass that has no mass. When you say an atom with no magnetic field, that's like saying a mass that has no mass. It's completely ridiculous. They'll talk about magnetic moments, but magnetic, mo magnetic moments are descriptive. They're not denotative, nor do they actually define what something is. Nor can these people define what is magnetism, what defines what a magnet is or is not. They are literally brainlocked into uh, atomistic thinking. And I've never, by the way, a lot of people misconstrue what I say, I've never denied uh, nuclear uh, particles, uh, protons and neutrons, but all free neutrons become protons, and therefore since all free neutrons since become protons, then therefore necessitatively there's only one fundamental particle. And I am not the first person to say there's a whole slew of the brightest minds who ever lived that said there's no such thing as an electron particle. Tesla said it, James Clerk Maxwell said it, said it, Oliver Heaviside said it, he called it psychosis, people that believed in electron particles. Eric Dollard said it, um, Walter Russell said it. There's no such thing as an, a charge-carrying particle. Completely ridiculous. 
These people are just completely lost in a sea of their own stupidity. This is what Nikola Tesla meant when he said that there are those who can think deeply. They're meaning mathematicians. This is what Nik Nikola Tesla meant, by the way. He's talking about people that can think deeply. He meant people that are doing math in their head and they're sitting there at the chalk. That's deep. deep thinking is not the same thing as clear thinking, nor are the two connected. He said there are people that can think deeply, but they can't think clearly. They're quite insane. Quote, unquote, Nikola Tesla. This... These are the people that Nikola Tesla was referring to. Deep thinkers, but they cannot think clearly. Because insane asylums are full of deep thinkers. They're great at chess. You know, they can do trigonometry, you know, standing on their head, you know, half drunk. Um, but they're insane. And they're insane for a reason. They cannot think clearly. These are academic stooges that can't think clearly. They're mathematicians. They're not actual academics or academics of mathematics, but they're not scientists. The scientist in Aristotelian or Platonic sense is someone who quests for the answers to things, to truth, to wisdom, fundamentally at the basis of truth. And uh, check out this article below. If you could read it and see through their nonsense, uh, I hope you're as tickled by it as I am. I love debating these people. I will never shy away from a debate with these people, but they're afraid to debate. But I have come run across a few that were so full of themselves. They thought for sure they were going to beat this guy with tattoos. You know, uh, I got a PhD in physics. I'm going to thump this guy covered in tattoos. It's like, well, let's let's go there, girlfriend. Let's have a debate on that, <laughs> on magnetism. You know, I'm altogether too happy to entertain you. Entertain you on that one. Let's do it. Let's debate magnetism. Let us go there. Anyway, I love that article to the person that sent it to me. I hope you enjoyed it as well as I did. Lux Everitas.